shift into another season this morning. We are about to enter into another season this morning. But you don't enter into seasons because the moon has gone round. <laughs> you don't enter into seasons because the earth has gone round the sun. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't enter into seasons because there is a difference in the date. You enter into a season because there is an appointment pattern in the heavens and men of understanding are able to decode it. And by keys in the name of the Spirit, they download the possibilities that are in those seasons. Death can come and go. The sun can go around the moon, the earth rather, can go around the sun. Your life will not change. Revolve around the sun, your life may never change. There are definite secrets that causes a man to be able to download the possibilities that are in every season. Many people lose the seasons of their lives. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, it said, The sons of Isaac, it says, they had understanding of the times and the seasons. And knew what Israel ought to do. He said the heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. It's not enough to know that it's a new season. He said they knew what to do. Their ability to know what to do was what made them champions and heads in their clan. You may have come this morning and you know that you are about to enter into a new season, but that you know is not enough. There are many people that are aware that God wants to visit them. God wants to bring them a visitation. Nothing happens because that you are aware does not make the difference. It is knowing what to do and doing what to do that activates a new season. Israel was in captivity in Egypt for 400 years. God had told Abraham many years before their captivity that they were going to be in captivity for 400 years, but they were there for 430 years because there was no man that knew what to do. The calendar of heaven was that intervention would come to them at the 400th year. But 400 years passed. 401, 402, until 430. God was in heaven. In those 30 years, many people died. They were being played, flogged. Listen, molested, children were killed in Egypt. God did nothing. Because the people on earth did not know what to do to download the possibilities that are in that season. There are many believers that promotion has been hanging on their head for 10 years, but they don't know what to do to download the promotion. There are many believers that God has spoken visitation over their life, but it has lasted for years. They don't know. Every time their birthday come, they feel something is about to happen. They think something will happen until the birthday passes. Every time the new year begins, they go and make resolutions. They think because a new date has come. They think because the earth has gone around the sun, it is going to bring them new possibilities. This is not bring visitation. It is the wisdom, the secret, and the understanding to take advantage of those seasons that makes the difference. And this is where many believers lack understanding. Somebody has been in business struggling for years. God shows up and says he's about to promote the person. The person is aware. Sometimes God sends men gracious and then prophets come to tell them this is their season. They are aware. But they look back after many years, nothing happens. A lady reaches the age of marriage. God tells her her husband is coming. She goes for meetings, prophet, confirm it that this is the school for their marriage. They wait two years, three years, four years, five years back. They are not yet married. Because they lack understanding. Many people, calendars of heaven, they were supposed to be in school. But those seasons come. They don't know how to take advantage of the people that's in that city. They see the past. Jesus, in Luke chapter 19, verse 44, he was entering Jerusalem, and the Bible said he lamented over Jerusalem. 
He said, Because thou was not the times of thy visitation. The worst tragedy that will happen to a man in this life is his inability to understand when God is visiting and to know what he needs to do. He will be alive, yet his purpose will pass him by. He will be alive, his purpose will elude him. Until he is a wretched life and live this world without impact. The knowledge of activating cities, the things to do, they are too important. Times of visitation. This morning is another strategic time in the spirit for us. We are going to enter this season. But to maximize this season, you need to know what you need to do. Because there are definite codes that are connected to every season, and only men who know how to press it can maximize it. I have seen this evil for many years. I have studied the lives of men and I have seen this season. Ten people praying together, laboring and fasting together. They go to the bush, they fast for seven days, they pray. Then later in their lives, only one of them makes it. And then they seek others. You can't find them anywhere. And then sometimes they reconnect after 20 years. And then you see the same people that were praying together, trusting God together. One of them is a high flyer. The other one is struggling with house And then out of sin party, the man who knows how to maximize it now dashes in the house and he calls it a bread. They are flying America like they are going to their backyard. They are commanding interests everywhere. And then you see them, they are still struggling looking for a job. And then the man gives you 100,000. You see, it's a breakthrough. Some come to post and say, Look at you, you were classmates. Your classmates now owns companies. He sees you, he visits your heart, he gives you a car, you call it a breakthrough. What is the difference between you and that man? He understands how to maximize his things. There is a dimension of God that if you violate what you call a blessing is a cost. What you receive and you celebrate is supposed to be the things you give people every day. But the error is because you don't know how to maximize your system. We see people who allow their systems come and go every day. And they relax, they cry. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, he was crying on their behalf. He said, Because thou knowest not the times of their visitation. Many have lost the times of their visitation because they don't know how to maximize the seasons of their lives. You see a young lady who is supposed to be a mother of four getting married at the age of 35. And she says, the blessing. We thank God for his intervention. But if that lady knew how to maximize her sins, maybe she would have married at the end of 23. But when the angel of marriage visited her, she was wasting her life. At 35, she was her first child was supposed to be left in the school. By the time she's 50, her first child will be 21. What she doesn't know is that even the destiny of her seed, she has robbed them badly. Because when that child is supposed to be a governor, that's when the child is graduating from the university. Because the woman doesn't understand the sequence of life. Her wakefulness of her life also becomes a negative effect on her child. The time her child is supposed to be dirty and ruling over things in this world, her child is taking school. And then the child comes into this world disadvantaged because the lady doesn't know the times of her visitation. When God was prompting her, she thought life was pleasure. We don't understand the intelligence that is in this world. When God created the tree, He didn't need to come creating trees anymore. He put the seed in the tree. So the seed of the next generation of the tree is inside of that tree. If that tree fails to produce seed, as far as God is concerned, that tree will die. That is why God destroyed the tree. Because the tree refuses to maximize the season is also a violation of the possibility of the next generation. Every time the man violates the season, he robs the next generation of their own advantage. That was the cause that ran 
through Israel for many generations. When men should wake up, you see boys of cutting it wasting their lives because they don't understand that it's not just about them, that the next generation to come depends on them. Not knowing how to maximize it is the cost of many people. You pray for them, lay hands on them, anoint them, but they waste everything that God gives them. The greatest prophet, Jesus said, they were slain in Jerusalem. He said, He lamented. He said, Because thou knowest God the times of thy visitation. For those of us who are young here, don't waste your destiny on the altar of temporary pressure. So take you away from your destiny. Because you have no idea what was written concerning you. I want to show you something this morning that will help you to understand the blueprint of your destiny. Maybe you thought it was about what your parents. So you run around with the young people and become an area poor. You don't know you are robbing yourself of a glorious destiny. See, the sons of Isaac, you see, they had understanding of the times and of the season. If you waste the season when you should be preparing, having fun, you will pay for it with your life. When Esau was supposed to be building himself, he was living for pleasure. The Bible says when he came back, Went for it bitterly, but he never received it again. Seasons, many people lose their seasons. Most of the prayers we pray now are not necessary. The crisis is because we wasted our seasons. We wasted a woman that God laid her womb to be a gate to create possibilities and dimensions in the natural. That woman converts herself. To become a sex worker because he wants to fix a good reborn. And then after 15, 20 years, he comes back crying to God. Her resources were mobilized from heaven 20 years ago, but she didn't understand this. Up to them, it is not for you to know the times or the 
diseases which the father has put in his own authority. So the key for unlocking diseases is the authority that manipulates that system. So Jesus was telling them, knowing about the system is not your prerogative, and even if you do, it's not important. The most important thing in the season is the authority that unlocks it. So every season that comes to your life, the only way to walk in the fullness of that season is your understanding of how to align with that authority. The moment you are in disappointment with that authority, that season will pass you by. Because the key for unlocking season is locked up in spiritual authority. It is authority that unlocks it. Now, authority is different from power. You may have power to do a lot of things, but authority works in the spirit realm. You only see the manifestation in time. Power works in time. Authority works in the spirit. For we preachers, you can find yourself operating in a certain dimension for many years. You will fast, you will pray, you will give. Everything you need to do, you will remain there until you understand a season has come. And then that season comes with its demands. The moment you align with that season, you are shifted immediately to another level. The same things you are doing, you will do those same things, but you see a different result. Power was able to sustain you at the level, but the moment authority came, it brought promotion. So you are doing the same thing you are doing, but your results become different. We were preaching the gospel for many years. God came and told me in 2019 March, I will begin to announce you. The same messages I preached. It's not like I started preaching a new message with new revelation. The same messages I preached that were littered everywhere. I collected some of them and put online. And in 14 days, I was lit from certain nations. What was the difference? What has happened to the message? The season has changed. As I was entering came to me and he said, there is a temptation coming your way, don't fall. So the key for entering that level of pain and influence was not in the fact that the system was coming. It was my obedience to the instruction. He said, don't fall. And because God helped me to start, the same thing I had began to produce a different result. Those messages were blessing the people that were listening to them. But the moment the season was unlocked, the scope changed, the influence changed, the impact changed, because seasons are unlocked by authority. That is why every time God wants to promote a man, the laws become different. He says, Dear me, if the righteousness of God revealed, he said, from faith to faith. So if you want to advance from one level of spiritual prosperity to another, it's not a new layer of righteousness is revealed to you. Right standing with the government of God. Many people violate the law and the protocol of righteousness. They know God wants to do something, but they fail to follow the demands of that season. Every season comes with a demand. Your obedience to the demand of that season is your alignment with the authority that unlocks that season. Jesus was in Nazareth for 30 years. They only knew him as a carpenter. But when the season of manifestation came, the man got up from his house and went straight to Jordan. John had been baptized. Where were you? He understood seasons. And when he went to John to be baptized, John said, No, I should be baptized of you. He said, So far it to be so for now. Thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. The power to unlock that season was locked up in the demand. This is where a lot of mistakes pay. We come to church, we sing, we worship God, we cry, we give up, we give sin, but we don't know the things that promote us. If God wants to promote a man, He brings a new quota of righteousness. The moment you walk into it, you have activated that authority on your behalf. Suffer it to be so for now. That was Jesus, the Son of God, speaking. He didn't say, Because I'm the Son of God, every time I want to save the world, I will save the world. There were many blind people in Nazareth. He didn't heal one. Many cripples, he didn't heal one. He was still the Son of God. But he said, So far, it to be so for now. As if it was not enough, he allowed John to be called into mediation 
but it's an economy in the spirit realm. Some of the things you call embarrassment, it was God working on you. In 2016, I didn't know that my season was closed. And God led me to my friend's church. My friend, we lived together in the same house. And as I started fellowshipping with him, I said, okay, why don't we just stay with you here? They said, I have a meeting that I can fellowship with you. And if there's anything I can do, fine. Both of us were submitted to a person of your son. Both of us live in the same house. My friend carried me to the Oslo unit. I said, join the Oslo. But in this church, we grow from the, from the, we grow through the ladder. <laughs> Both of us were ministers in Lebanon. Because I said, we go to church on Sunday morning. My old friend said, we grow through the ladder. And they carried me and I in the Austrian unit. I have I had my master's degree. At that time, we are not even graduated from the university. I had my master's degree. And he was on the campus church. And we come to church and stand at the door. Welcome to our TV people in Berlin. When they have their convention and people come for Remnant, Remnant there was a minister. And we stand in front the way these guys are standing like this. The Remnant pastors will look at me. What's happening? What was going on here? That's when you will know that promotion is not about coming the Bible. Promotion is not about talking God. Promotion is the quality and the texture of your yieldedness to the government of the Holy Spirit. Stay there! One year, six months, eight months, I was a worship in my friend's church. For those one year, eight months, when the church closed, I went. He does all his leaders with him and carry his back and follow him. And we go to the house and we become friends. When we go home, we become friends. One year, eight months, my old friend. Lord, what is this? I didn't know what was going on. I died for the time. Until a point came when it became normal for me. I was doing the ocean work, I was having fun. I was conscious of the fact that I'm a graduate, I'm a master's degree holder. But the point came, I didn't remember it anymore. At first, I was conscious, come on, what would I be serving these children? The point came, I didn't remember it anymore. I didn't know that that period that the Lord was dealing with me, He was reorganizing my soul to be able to handle glory and power. Most of the things you call embarrassment, they are schools of the Spirit. Those are the things that will help you maximize the seasons that are opening over your life. Because seasons are activated by authority. When those seasons were gone, even himself knew that it would be a sin for me to continue with what I was doing. And I passed the test. I passed the test. As the seasons are unlocked today, most of you believe you and go to your shop and there's something we have to want to pour it. The Holy Ghost says, keep quiet. You will not be aware that it is the texture of your obedience that unlocks the powers of his sin. Most of you will go to your office and not your crisis. You want to move, you want to act, and the Holy Ghost will come down. You keep quiet, you are dying. You are dying. Because the possibility of that season will only walk through the weakness of your spirit. And that's what the Holy Ghost is desperate to teach you. And if you fail to pass the test, even though the prophecies are gone forth, the season will be resurrected over your head, you never enter. The laws of activate the season. To activate the season is very easy. It's very easy because the authority to unlock the system is has now been given to us in the name. Anybody that knows how to invoke that name can unlock the system, but walking in it is a function of obedience. So, as we unlock the system this morning, as you go back, your path to maximizing the system is to your obedience to the utterance of God and the prophetic instructions that keep coming from the altar. Sometimes God wants to unlock a season and he gives a man a, a, a demand and the man fails. Did you read the life of Abraham in Genesis chapter 22? God promised Abraham many years ago that he would be blessed with all things. All things! Here was Abraham, he had given birth to his son. The 25 years, the teaching was just to help him learn the way of faith. So Abraham learned faith for 25 years and God was not moved. God didn't say, okay, you are growing old. God was where he was. When Abraham succeeded in learning faith, he gave him a child. But the greatness had not come. The only way he was going to walk into that greatness was to pass the demand of the season. And 
when Isaac was grown up, he said, Take thy child, thy only child, whom thou lovest, and offer him to me as sacrifice. What? How? What is that? His name? You promised me this child. I waited for 25 years. Now this child is growing. So all together we'll be around 35 or something here. And then you now come and say, I should go and kill this child. This is the voice of the devil. Have you not been in that situation where you were trusting God for a particular amount of money? You were trusting God for money and then the money came. The moment the money came, God now says, take that money, go and put it on the altar. <laughs> see why many people remain small. They come to church, they see the rich giving like foolish people. They say it's because they are rich. No, they are not giving because they are rich. They are rich because they are giving. The poor man will keep the little he has and remain little. Even when God is speaking, he's thinking of the market he wants to buy. That's why he remains at the level of market. But the rich man understands the law. All he has, God said, give the rush and drop it. And then this year he gave 1,000. Next year he gave 10,000. The next one he gave 100,000. The next time he gave 1 million. And then he calls this immediately. Because they have money, that's why they are showing. Keep your own there, and you will remain with that change you have for 30 years. The law of activating system is the law of obedience. <laughs> Didn't make sense. Abraham knew he told Sarah that day <laughs> the family was scattered. So there was no need to tell Sarah. He managed with the child from the land to say we are going to worship God. And in Genesis 22, verse 5, even the men that walked with Abraham he didn't tell them. Abraham told them we are going up to worship God because even the gods will stop him. They will say, No, this kid, no, it's not God. He didn't even tell the gods that followed him. He went to the mountain. And when he was about to kill the child, then God speaks from heaven. He said, Now I know. What do you mean now you know? Are you not the one that called you from the science God? I thought you knew everything. But the man needed to be tested in order to qualify for the season that was opening. He said, Now I know. Now I know that thou fearest me. And he said, God swore by his name that in blessing I will bless you. That was the same thing. He told Abraham over 35 years ago. Now Abraham is about to enter because this is where he was able to demonstrate the quality of obedience that was that dimension. Now I know that you fear me. In blessing, I will bless you. And in Genesis 24, verse 1 to 2, the Bible said Abraham was old and speaking in and the Lord had blessed him in all things. Is it not funny that we have Christians now? We are all seeking Abraham blesses a man. And we seek him for 20 years and still blessing our lives. Abraham blesses a man. We think spiritual things are kings. We want to rock God. He said to the prayer world, I will show myself prayer world. When you want to show God you are crooked, he will keep you there for a long time. The quality of your obedience is what determines the seasons you can activate. Now I know that you fear me. What are those things that God has insisted you do that you have been used to do for the past five years? That is why those are saying prophecy is not working. The prophecy has worked again and again. You have failed to take delivery because your obedience is lacking. He said, when your obedience is fulfilled, then you can avenge other disobedience. We are raising a generation of Christians that have no regard for the authority of God. The God who has no regard for his authority is the God you are hoping to bless. This is why we have crisis every day. This vision that is about to be opened, you can open up different dimensions of this in every day of your life. There are times when in one year, we notice three, four, five, six promotions. Because, you know, God is light. I don't want to enter into quantum weapons now, because I've seen young people. God is light. 
This light you are seeing, you think is just straight. Life is not a continuum. Life is in packets. In packets. We call it quantum. But the frequency of the release is too high. That's why you think it's in rain. It's actually dispersed in packets. Everything God wants to give you comes to you in packets. But you determine the frequency by the secrets you understand. Because God is light. If God gives you everything he wants to give you now, he will destroy you. He says, I will not drive out the enemy in one day. Because if I do, the land becomes desolate. And the beast will come in and devour you. So the degree of your enlargement is what determines the volume of blessing you can accommodate. And your enlargement is not to charge. It is the secret you apprehend. Every city you enter, you can maximize it at will, depending on your level of understanding and quality of obedience. The way to maximize the season is to take advantage of what the authority of God and cause on. And the authority of God and cause on the name of God. This is Remember the Bible said, God swore by his name that he blessed him. He will bless Israel. The authority of God resonates on the name of God. The name of God is the seal of his authority. Listen, in the natural realm, we use names for nomenclature, we use names for ident identification. But it's different from the spiritual realm. So if I say, oh, well, my friend will say, yes, uh, can I help you? Because he thinks that name is to identify him. But in the spiritual realm, names are deeper than identification. Names in the spirit are signatures of authority. So the signature of authority of a man in the spirit is designated by his name. So the authority of God is locked up in the name of God. Every time a man through obedience enters a season, then his understanding of the authority of the name of God becomes a tool of continually unlocking the dimensions and the possibilities of that system. But unfortunately again, many believers don't understand the weight of the name of God. So the guy is going in the car and the driver prays, say Jesus! And the Jesus he calls was out of fear, not out of revelation. The first thing I have told you this morning is what? Continuous obedience as a precursor for entering into the season. The second thing I want to show you now is using the name of God by revelation as a key of maximizing your system. Because when true obedience will enter the system, by your revelation of the name of Jesus, you will begin to maximize the system. Remember, when God wanted to bless Abraham, He said, your name shall no longer be Abraham, but Abraham. So everywhere Abraham went, He began to utter a new kind of name. I am no longer an Azul father. I am now the father of kings. So that name was the witness of the new thing God wants to begin to do in this life. So as this season is unlocked, if you go back and then you are talking the things you were talking yesterday, even though you are in a new possibility, you cannot maximize it. That's why God comes to a man. He said, I will make you great. Or he tells the man, you are great. And the man goes back is lamenting about the crisis of yesterday. He has not entered into the reality of today. The moment he enters into the reality of today, he begins to confess to him the way God says it is. That was how God created the world. When God was creating the world, everything God created in Genesis chapter 1, it did not appear. It was in Genesis chapter 2 that most of the things he created began to appear. And I will show you from the Bible. The Bible says God called forth the green plant and it came out of the ground. And in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4, the Bible said, God had not yet made man. So there was no green vegetation of the land because there was no man to tree the ground. So what God said, where did this seed appear? He saw it in the spirit. As this season is proclaimed over you, it will be declared to be a season of abundance. So when you get home, it doesn't matter what you see. The moment Abraham was able to see it, he began to call himself Abraham. And the Bible said, in Romans chapter 4 verse 18, he said he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. What was he doing? He was saying what God said. Imagine
imagine if you were in Abraham's generation and a man of 100 years who is impotent now wakes up all of a sudden and says, Now I am father of kings. I am father of kings. You will say, Oh, this crisis has made him mad. Ah, this thing has affected him. But he understood how the realm works. He knew what the realm was. So he called his circumstance what God calls it. That's how you minister in the spirit. You come to somebody who is sick. Obviously, the person is sick. But when you come, you will not say you are sick. You say you are healed. Because you are calling what God calls. And the moment faith is released, the person becomes what God calls. So the name you call your circumstance is the resource you have. When you enter a city, it becomes important that your father has changed. Most of you cities have come and gone. There are some that you won't enter, but you are not walking in reality. Because you talk your circumstance, you don't talk what God says. Every season God unlocks the potentials of those seasons are locked up in a name. This is why the children of Israel had many names for God. Every dispensation had a name for God. Ever had need and God came and said, Yes, truly you are there, but I will give you a child. So he now saw a God that had the ability to provide all his needs, and he said his name is called El Shaddai. So when they related with God, they related with God based on the possibilities they see in Him that was available for their citizens. He was in need, he was in lack, he was in want. And then here comes the Spirit and say, I will provide all you need. He now began to call that Spirit the multi-breasted one. So every time Abraham went before God, he said, the multi-breasted one, the multi-breasted one. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob called God El Shaddai. And this is why they could not lack in their lives. Abraham needed a child. The El Shaddai gave him a child. Isaac was in Gera. There was poverty in the land. People were running to Egypt. He wanted to run to Egypt. God said, stay still in this land. And Isaac began to relate with the El Shaddai. Isaac dug well in the dry ground. And the El Shaddai made water to come out of it. So long as he was calling El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Everything he needed was supernaturally provided because he knew that the potentials of that season was locked up in the understanding of the God that provides all things. So he said, El Shaddai. These guys knew this secret so much that even when they blessed their children, they blessed them with those names because those names were like cactus that hosted all of those dimensions. So Jacob would bless his children and he said, El Shaddai bless you. Adonai keep you. All of them in different things. After one means Lord, El Shaddai means supplier. So when he wants to supply, he said, let the supplier bless you. When he wants to preserve, he said, let the master, the Lord, keep you. They understood the place of utterance. A new season is coming upon your life. It's important what you say. Because your obedience will be complete, but your language will be wrong. And if your language is wrong, everything that is available, you cannot maximize. Israel! Were, in, were going out of Egypt and there was war. There was no way they could conquer their enemies. Their enemies were stronger than them. And instantly, God gives Moses wisdom. He says, sit on the mountain and so long as we lift your hand, Israel will conquer. And Moses was there, his hand lifted. And so long as the hand was up, Israel was winning. He had come down, Israel loses. Aaron and Hall had to support him. When the battle was over, they now changed what they called God. Began to call him to go and listen. Because that season, what God was doing for them was to cover them like a banner. So their utterances were consistent with the possibilities and provisions of the season. So when you are blessed, be sensitive to hear. Don't be religious. Believers come to church, you are blessing them, you are doing like this. They think it by closing their eyes and nothing happens to you because we are gesticulating. You need to understand the secrets that bind these things and make them happen. You will hear a man of God come and say, This season is a season of divine health. But the person didn't hear what God said. He goes back, he falls sick, and he's struggling, trying to. What did God say about this season? The Israelites knew it, so they carried it as their heritage. Every time they laughed, they went to invoke the name. 
So when Isaac was blessing Jacob, he didn't bother to give him his asset. He said, I bless you with corn and wine. The name he gave Jacob, anywhere Jacob goes to, that name can produce corn and wine. They are no regard for inflation. I bless you with corn and wine. So he gave him Elshada. And this was Jacob. Wanted to bless the sons of Joseph in Genesis chapter 48. And he began to talk to them about the same El Shaddai that appeared to him. These are things how these guys walked. They understood spiritual laws. They had masters over secrets. But the believer talks in half. Today, somebody gives you 10,000. He says, I am blessed to thank God. Tomorrow, he needs money. Money doesn't show up. He says, Wait till they happen everywhere. Try. How can the mouth that bless cause? How can the fountain of fresh water bring salt water? So we choke our possibilities. And we are not taught. So we don't understand the power that is on the tongue. He said, Life and death is on the power of the tongue. He said, They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. The fruit is what you say, it becomes a reality. The name for the season must become the banner over your life. Why do we call Jesus Savior? Because in the season of salvation, God was no longer coming to us as Jehovah Support. He was not coming to us as Jehovah Ra. He was coming to us as Savior. So the name of God that the angel introduced to Mary, he said it shall be called Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So the reason he was called Jesus was because salvation God. So the name was consistent with the season. Every party that through obedience follow salvation demand, which is to believe in his heart and confess the same. And as you are saved, then you carry the name Jesus everywhere you go. This is why we call Jesus every time there is a name. Because we know that the name Jesus has the power to invoke salvation. But if you don't understand that everything God wants to do, and all the abilities of God are locked up in the name, you will talk the way you choose to talk. Because you will not understand that your greatest security is in your world. Your greatest security is not in the hands of the military. It is in what you say. But many don't understand. Seasons. A season is about to open over us. And the first demand of that season is to be careful to obey everything that that season dictates. The season may dictate that for you, begin to give liberally. For you to maximize that season, giving must become your life. The season may demand that for you, no quarrel, no argument, no backbiting, no gossip. They look, so long as you obey the demand of that season, everything that season demands become for you. And the season may demand that for you is prayer and fasting. The season may demand that for you is investment. If you violate the demand of that season, even if God appears in your bedroom, it will not amount to anything. This is what believers don't know. A lot of people have encounters. They see angels, they see light. And then they think that because they saw light, their life will change. Your life doesn't change because you saw something. It is your obedience to the law that that spirit brings that changes your life. Many believers are lawless. And it's a time for us to come back to find out what it is that God is demanding of us. This season that, that is going to be unlocking over us in a few moments, it will come with demands, I assure you. Most of you may go to your house and it will become difficult for you to gossip. Most of you may go to your house, it will become difficult for you to quarrel. Most of you may go to your house, those things you wanted to give that you couldn't give, if you don't give, you will not sleep. Because for you to enter into the fullness of the season, you must become liberal. You must become weak. You must become tired. These are the laws that come with your sins. And if you obey those laws, everything that sin has to offer will just be happening to you. You will sit in your house and you say, Ah, you see that God loves me too much. You are the one pursuing money. See, there are people that since they break today, they have received more than 10 alas. Not because they supply goods and services. Through obedience, they have been strategically positioned in a place of blessing. Some people they believe their back is run down because of my 
foundation from our last. And all of us are sons of God. What is the difference? How did they get there in life? It is by progressive obedience. Every time you violate instruction, every time you violate the demands of a system, every time you violate the instructions of God, you are setting yourself up to be small. The reason we struggle, the reason we are small, is not because our God is weak, it's because our obedience water is not clean. We need to consciously begin to find out. I told us that Paul was the last of the apostles. So naturally, by chronological order, he was supposed to be the least. But if you study the operation of the apostolic and even their contribution in the scriptures, you discover that Paul was greater than them all. When Paul met Jesus, Paul said, Lord, what will you have me do? He knew that a new season had come in his life. He was going in a certain direction. But God had activated the new system. And instantly, by the spirit of wisdom, Paul didn't tell Jesus, What is this thing for me? That was the question Peter asked. He said, We have left all and followed you. What is this thing for us? There's nothing wrong in demanding from God. But there is a higher kind of request. For Paul, when he met Jesus, he knew a new system had come. He said, Lord, what will you have me to do? And Paul became the greatest of all the apostles. There are two questions we will ask this morning. The first question is, Lord, as you open this season, what will you have me do? It doesn't matter whether you are young or old. When the spirit brings a question of obedience, age is not a factor. Because it is the supply of the spirit that will make the difference. Age is not a factor. Most of the men that are shaping their world today, if you read their story, they become when they were 18 years old. In 1979, Bishop David Oedeku called the whole Nigeria for a three days fast. He is about 66 today. In 1979, how can a young boy like that have the audacity to think he can call Nigeria for a fast in a military era? So when he is speaking with authority today, he is not speaking with authority because he is an old man. He understood those secrets when he was young. David was not shaking Israel because he had become an old king at the age of 17. David could confront Goliath. So age is not what makes the difference. It is the extent to which you know the spirit that is calling you into depths. Most of us, the Lord calls us by different kinds of instruction. We violate it. The reason we pray so much and we have so little is because we don't understand that our result most of the time is locked up in our obedience. Jesus says, seek ye first the kingdom. Every other thing shall be added unto you. So Jesus didn't even ask us to pray for food. He didn't ask us to pray for prayer. He said that is what a beggar is doing. You know who is a beggar? A beggar is not a sinner. A beggar is a devotee of a religion. A beggar is a religious man. He said they are the ones that ask for clothes and ask for bread. He said the lilies of the field. He said that beautiful and mighty as Solomon is, is not as arrayed as one of them. He said your heavenly father knows that you need this thing. So what then is the cure for lack? What then is the key for abundance? It's not necessarily prayer. You may pray and receive, but it's not necessarily prayer. It is obedience to the demands of the government of God. A man of obedience is a man of abundance. Abraham did not pray once for prayer. He didn't pray once for cattle. But he lived a life of continuous obedience. And when Abraham was told, the Bible says the Lord had blessed him in all things. Our obedience quota in this season is very important. In the moment we are going to bow our heads and ask the Lord, Lord, we have come to another season. What will you have us do? I have come to another season. Will this one still be another calendar year? God forbid. What will you have me to do? There is something you need to do because you know that your success story depends on the things you do. It doesn't take God anything to change our story. It takes God nothing. You may sit down and calculate and say, Kai, this is my dream. When will I get there? As I am now, 
All I have in my bank account is 10,000. How will I get there? You don't know how skilled it's working. If God wants to orchestrate a change in your life, it's mysterious. You can step out of your house in your job barracks and your primary schoolmate just shows up driving on the street. And then he tells you he came from America yesterday. Why he came to Nigeria, he doesn't know. What are you doing here? You see your boy, see me. He said, no, 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 no. You mean you? They go, they go. You see your boy, see the phone. And they go with this. He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> Baba, Baba, you will go home to all of this country. He said, No, 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 no. The next thing he carries you to a car stand and say, Pick in the car. Ah. Your budget could not imagine car. Even if they told you to imagine yourself driving a car, it would be hard. Your brain can't capture it. But that's how business work. The Bible said, The step of the righteous is order. There's a place for your abundance, but only by your obedience can you walk there. This is what many violate. So they cry, praying and begging God. Meanwhile, God has given the formula. He says, seek ye first the kingdom. All these things shall be added. So we seek things instead of seeking obedience. This is the crisis of our lives. This morning, we are going to ask God. The biggest things that God did for you are not the crazy things you see. The biggest things God does for you are the things He walked into your spirit. That's why men become invincible. You see a man walking in blessing every day of his life. You say, How is this thing happening? Even if the negative supernatural they know, if you like, go and seek a witch doctor today. There is no spirit that gives to a man without obedience. Every spirit walks by laws. When God makes a declaration, a manifestation is tied to your obedience. Manifestations don't just come to pass because God declared. They come to pass because men are willing to obey. This morning we will ask a question. Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? If you know what to do, you will get what you should do. Lord, what will you have me do? That's our prayer this morning. And as we depart from here, God gives us instruction, either through His Spirit or through His servant. As we live, we may speak it. The Bible says, carry with you words. Carry, carry words. Why do you think the elders of old were so bold? A man will come to you and say, before I bless you, go and bring the best medicine. What do you mean by that? A man wants to bless you. He says, Go and empty your bank account. Are you okay? The man knows that every word you speak is more important than your one million in account. So he wanted to bless his soul. He said, Go and get me that. Let me eat, and then my soul can bless you. That man knows what he carries. This is why great men don't throw walls around. They know that their walls have the power to change things. As you live here and God gives you the instruction, carry it as your insurance and keep speaking that word that God tells you to speak. For Abraham, he said he was strong, giving thanks. He was speaking in the direction of what God spoke. How many of us have declared that we are sick? You just said headache, and the next day you have told 30 people already, I am sick, I am sick. You will never say, I am healed. Go and take your drug, but never say, I am sick. The Bible says, let no man in Zion say, I am sick. It says, when men are cast down, it says, say, I am lifted up. It didn't say, when men say they are cast down, men are actually cast down. It says, when men are cast down, don't talk casting down, even if you are down. When you are down, that is when you should talk up. As you leave this season, Speak according to the demands of the season. When you obey the laws of the season, then talk what the season says. Never speak what God is not saying. You will set yourself up. And even God Himself will be helpless on your 
matter. He said, My people, my people, he didn't say strangers, he said they are destroyed. If they are your people, why do you allow them to be destroyed? For the lack of knowledge. That means God tried to help them, but they can't. The Lord tells them, I want to bless you, but they go out and they say, Nothing they walk. I'm going to increase you. They go out and they say, Nothing they walk. Every time God tries, God cannot reach out to them because they use their voice and their mouth to destroy what God is creating. Every season has laws, and the secret of downloading the potentials of the season, they are simply two. One is obeying the demands of that season, two is confessing the possibilities that is revealed in that season, and you will discover that your lives will change. Do we bow down and talk to the Lord this morning? This morning I came with very simple instructions so that everybody can understand. If not every day we teach mysteries and we talk uh, deep spiritual reality to well. I try to say it in a simple way this morning. So that if you don't remember anything, unless you go to your shop and you want to gossip and you lose your peace, know that the law of the city is what is confronting you. When next you want to malign somebody's name and you lose your peace, know that it's the law of the city. When next you want to rebel and you lose your peace, know that it's the law of the city. It may be something you want to do, but remember, the more you go in the direction of disobedience, the more you make your life difficult. When next you want to talk fear, know that the season does not permit it. When next you want to talk unbelief, Know that the season does not permit it. If you know what to do, you will have what you should have. The problem of many people is because their life is not gathered together by laws. The problem with most people is because their tongue is not controlled by laws. They just want what they feel and they do what they like. Men of honor don't behave like that. It's only animals that, that do what they feel like doing. So a goat sleeps with the sister because he felt like having sex. A goat sleeps with the mother. A goat gets off and faces this direction. He talks this direction. No law around his life. That's why he's an animal. But the Bible says a man in honor that knoweth not is like a beast of the field that perishes. Our life must be gathered and connected together by laws. Every season of your life has laws. Every season. I have fasted and prayed for many years. But this season that I am in, only one thing God is emphasizing concentration. Concentration. So I know that I have to keep retreating every week. And if I don't obey and that instruction is lifted, then everything that God brings for me this season, I will lose it. It's not enough to say I fasted for 10 years. This season, God is saying, Wait upon me. Wait upon me. It will violate it. You will discover that the thing you are doing and seeing results, the point will come, it will become like chaff. Chaff. You were seeing if people were crying, falling everywhere. God comes and said, There is a new season. Wait upon me. Wait upon me. And then you are busy. You are running there and there. And then you come to church, you shout. Nothing happens anymore. You become like chaff. Because the power is not necessarily what you are doing, it's in the supply of the spirit. And we ask the Lord this morning. Lord, what will you have me do? What will you have me do? I didn't come to speak to everybody. I came to speak to the people that this city is truly for. The people that will truly maximize this city. And they will have testimonies that will blow their minds. Testimonies. Testimonies. What will you have me do, Lord? Talk to the Lord in the privacy of your heart. In the privacy of your heart. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. 